My name is Liz Jernigan. I'm a senior UX researcher with Amazon Web Services, focused specifically on AI and machine learning. So today I want to talk to you about this idea of kind of removing these rose-colored glasses of Gen AI. This is something I see in my space frequently. So to give you a little bit of context about what I do in the spaces that I support, I support teams called the Machine Learning Thought Leadership Programs. This is all about driving awareness and adoption of AI, which would make it sound like I'm going to be very pro-AI. But as I've been working in this field for a few years specifically related to AI, there's a lot of things that I've learned. Now with this, I talk to a really wide variety of users in the research that I do. It varies from students, some as young as like middle school, high school, through college, people that are the technical decision makers thinking about how they apply AIML or the non-technical ones, and then getting into aspirants who want to get into AIML as well as practitioners. Now in the last three years, when I talk to people about what they think AI is, three years ago, it was Marvel. Sci-fi movies, Tesla, that was their frame of reference for what AI was. Now, because as we've seen things shift with generative AI, it's a little bit more of chat GPT. Now, looking at that, well, let me caveat this first. Based on the conversations I've had with you guys for the last three days, some of you know a lot about this. Some of the things that I'm going to share with you today are already well understood, but we've only got 10 minutes. So we're going to keep it kind of short. But these are the things that have been impactful in my work trying to understand AI and really increase the adoption and awareness of AI with um, populations all around the world. So stick with me on this. All right. So one of the big gaps that we see is AI literacy. And this is something that even in technical audiences, we see significant gaps. They don't know what AI is. Their frame of reference is Marvel or a chatbot that doesn't really explain what it is. And the problem is that makes it hard to actually know where to apply AI effectively. What problems is it good at solving? What problems is it really bad at solving? There's a lot of assumptions that it can work kind of great at a bunch of things. Not always. And then thinking about how to apply it effectively, what the risks are, and how to resolve them. And that's where I have a really strong case that I want to encourage with the people that are here. There's also like some issues of people thinking that it's really technical, that it's really hard, and therefore it's not for them. And so in trying to drive additional adoption of AIML, when people are like, no, that's for people that code, that's for data scientists, not me. And as we're trying in the field to get better representation of AI practitioners globally for people that are underrepresented in tech, this is a huge issue. So should we worry? When I talk about AI, people kind of immediately fall into sci-fi, Skynet, AI doomerism, end of the world kind of conversations. You know. I get it, but that's kind of pulling away from existing harms that already happen now. And to me, these are far more scary because they're already happening. And they're things that we've known about for years. So the really horrifying list, perpetuating power imbalances, getting into manipulating people, stealing intellectual property, you know, the use by like authoritarian um, regimes, lots of different things. Um, Reinforcing social paradigms, these are all things that exist and happen now. Um, and even like the environmental impact, there's been lots of different things when it comes to this. So this gets into what I hear in different teams that I've worked with and from other researchers in the field, is they kind of treat it like tech debt. You know, we'll do it later. It'll be a fast follow. That's not a priority. We don't have to think about this from the beginning. And this is where, for me as a researcher, I really want to advocate for the fact that we have to challenge this assumption. From the very beginning of scoping of, hey, I think we might want to use AI for this problem, there needs to be a lot of critical thinking and have researchers involved in the process in terms of understanding what data are we using? What problems are we solving? How will this be used? What are the risks? What are these different components? So you cannot assume that, you know, oh, we'll have a checklist or an AI tool that will make sure that it's safe. These are risks that need to be identified ongoing in the process. And the thing is, that's where researchers can really provide a lot of value. We're really good at understanding our users, advocating for them getting this data and helping shape stakeholders' minds. And I say that because this is what I do in the work that I'm a part of, is consistently helping teams think about 
the things that they're maybe not considering because they've got those rosy glasses on and they're thinking about all the benefits that AI will have, how it will make things faster, more efficient, empowering people. So how can we help? This is where, these are the things, this is not a complete list, you'll hear more from all the other panelists that are talking today, and I'm happy to talk with you directly, but these are the small activities as a researcher that I do on an ongoing basis. And part of that's going, getting more literate. This is where learning about what AI is, how it works, where the harms are, different populations, how they think about this. There's so many accessible resources out there. So please take a part of that. And I will give you lots of resources when it comes to that. Voice concerns early and often at every relevant moment. These are things where I have impacted features. I have done a lot of work in helping them consider things they would never think about. Because once you identify and know what the risk can look like, it's very easy to look at services and features and go, there's a risk there. Have you thought about this? And product teams normally can get a little sheepish when you're kind of like, let's talk about something deeply uncomfortable. Like, you know, systemic racism or different components of like how this can cause harm, body dysmorphia, um, systematic oppression. Not fun conversations PMs normally want to have with you. But one of the things that's been really effective for me is kind of going, what are the risks if we don't think about this? What are the risks if we get into, you know, only thinking about it once it's launched, once it does harm, putting in those guardrails after? Um, yeah, so making space for these stakeholders to have these conversations. I'm very fortunate in the team that I work with where they're enthusiastic. They're like, please do that more. Help us think about this stuff. I understand not all researchers are in a safe environment to do so. So although I'm encouraging you, I trust your judgment. And the other thing is conduct research that identifies these risks, makes them visible. This is something where you can't just test the happy paths. You really need to be very thoughtful about this. So with that, this is just to acknowledge, we don't have enough resources. We don't have enough time. The things that I'm suggesting are very small. And in the conversations as we start working on these products, and also as just end users of AI tools and systems, not just ChatGPT, there's so many that have AI at the foundation of them, and there will just continue to be more. These little things will definitely help. So to make that, sorry to put a QR code on the board, but I wanted to share some of the things that have been useful to me. So I put together a list of organizations, including some of the ones by the incredible people we've had here at DScout. Um, like um, Humanity Centered yesterday and a couple other groups that I've worked with. There's articles, links, books, people. My recommendation and request is please add to this list. Help all of our different research peers become a little bit more aware and better able to advocate for that. So with that being said, I know it sounds a little doom and gloomy, but I highly encourage all of you to get more actively involved as we kind of help define how research can best support Gen AI. So thank you very much and look forward to talking to you.